morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Uh, my name is Andrew Soule. I'm a seminary student down in Mankato, Minnesota. Um, and I'm going to be filling in for Pastor Merced today. So uh, it's wonderful to be with you guys. Uh, we will follow the order of worship on page 5 in the hymn in front of you. Um, we will begin there with the opening hymn, hymn 198. Amen. 
and unclean, and that we have sinned against thee by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to thine infinite mercy, seeking and imploring thy grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given thy only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by thy Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of thee and of thy will, and true obedience to thy word, to the end that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and hath given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgiveth all our sins. To all who believe on his name, he giveth them power to become the sons of God, and hath promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this unto us all.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh, Jesus, our beloved friend, whose continual presence has been promised us to be at our side in all our troubles, Give us strength to bear them and wisdom to overcome them. Grant us grace to endure every sorrow that comes our way, and courage to cope with every disappointment. You are the help of the helpless, who liveth and reigneth with, with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. 
If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. And through the door, and though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not reported in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Here it is. Here.
consideration this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Your boasting is not good. Do you know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate this festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. O oh Lord, these are your words. Sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Ah, the smell of Easter lilies. I always love this time of year. As a kid growing up, oh, the, the smell of Easter lilies was always so pungent in church, but it's really, it was a nice smell too, not a bad smell. And then the smell of the egg bake, baking in the oven, mm, so good. And the fresh fruit and the ham that was in the oven waiting for after church, that was just unbearable to smell as you sat in church. You, you probably uh, had an Easter festival as well. I'm sure you guys probably had a breakfast, or maybe at some of your families you had ham and stuff too. In our text this morning, though, we're going to talk about bread. I don't know if any of you make bread from scratch. Not a lot of people do anymore nowadays. It is a lot of work. you got to get, get the dough all rounded up and pat it down, and then it sticks to your fingers, and you got to get flour in there, and kind of a mess, messy project. But Paul, in our text, talks about leaven, or yeast. And as anybody who's made bread knows, you need yeast to get the bread to rise. Otherwise, you just have a flat pancake, or pita bread, or something. So, Paul talks about leavened bread and unleavened bread. Now, in the Bible, leaven a lot of times, or yeast, yeast is as a bad thing in the Bible most of the time. Uh, and yeast is a fungus. You know, we don't really stop to think about that very often, that it's a fungus that makes your bread rise. So it's a harmless, harmless fungus that helps us out. But it's a fungus, nonetheless. And in the Old Testament, it was kind of seen as a sign of sin, a symbol of bad things, of sin. And so in our text today, we hear St. Paul say, Cleanse out the old leaven. Now this text is a very is a very important text for the Christian church because the Christian church usually we hear this epistle read on Sunday. I don't know if you guys did, but usually on Sunday, this is the epistle for Easter Sunday. And this this tradition went all the way back to the early church. You can find sermons by people in the third century AD writing about this text, this very text that we have before us. And the early Christians associated Easter with Passover. It's kind of a connection we've lost a little bit in our world, where none of us are Jews that I know of. None of us are very familiar, you know, Norwegians and Germans aren't very familiar with the idea of Passover. It's kind of a different, different concept. But Passover was a very important festival. And it pointed ahead to Christ. And one of the things that they had to do for the Passover, when they made their bread, they had to make sure they made unleavened bread. And Jesus himself, as in last night, on the last supper, the night before he was crucified, what did he eat with his disciples? Unleavened bread. And so to this day, we have unleavened bread in our communion, when we take communion. So, what about this unleavened bread and Passover business? What does that have to do with Easter? Well, as I said, it's been a tradition for this text to be read on Easter. But they so, the early Christians associated this text with Jesus because they saw him as the Passover lamb, as we should too. Jesus is our Passover lamb. So today we're going to be considering the theme, Christ's resurrection makes us new. And we're going to first look at how we are all born with the love of sin in our lives, and then we're going to take a look at how Christ 
makes us a new loaf of bread. He makes us a new loaf of bread, even though we don't deserve it. So we're born in just sin in this world, and we always have troubles all around us. We are full of the yeast of sin in our lives. And like the children of Israel in the Old Testament, we are enslaved to a real, real Pharaoh from birth. A scary Pharaoh, the devil. And he holds us in his slavery with the chains of sin. In our lives, we are servants to sin often, and we know we shouldn't be. And by nature, without Christ, we are to be the most pitied because of our sin. Because of our sin, we're a slave to Pharaoh, the devil. We do whatever he tells us to. That's pretty scary to think about, isn't it? We hear Jesus himself say in the New Testament, in, in the Gospel of John, that anyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. And now it's interesting, because the Pharisees right before that said, Oh, we've never been slaves to anyone. We're descendants of Abraham. But in reality, they were forgetting that they were slaves at one time under Pharaoh, just as all of us are slaves under the Pharaoh, the devil, and sin. We are stuck in a bad predicament. Without Jesus in our life, we can't get out of slavery. We can't get out of death. All of us here know that one day, we're going to have to face death. Some of us sooner than others, but all of us eventually will look death in the face. And without Christ, what a scary, sad thing that is for us to face. We weren't meant to die originally. Originally, we were meant to live in this world. Sometimes we forget that. When God created Adam and Eve in the garden of perfection, they were meant to live on this planet forever. And that's just something that we can't even grasp in our world. Sin has so encompassed our world that we can't even imagine what that would be like. We just, it's just taken for granted. We assume that one day everybody has to die. We assume that life is just what it is. But it's more than that. And today we see the Apostle Paul telling us Cast out the leaven. Cast out the yeast. Because you are a new lump in Christ. A new loaf. I don't know if you really want to be called a lump of dough, but that's what Paul calls us, is a lump of dough. Without Christ in our lives, things are pretty rough. We have the leaven of sin in our lives. It's interesting that there are kind of three Passovers spoken of in the, in the Bible. Three Passovers. Now, I told you about the one already, and that's the one you're probably most familiar with, is the Passover lamb, the celebration in the Old Testament, and how on, right before their exodus from, East, from, from Egypt, the Jews put, cat sacrificed the Passover lamb, and they painted the blood on the doorpost, and that's a beautiful picture of how Christ paints his blood on us, too, and makes us holy in baptism. But that's the Passover you probably think about. But there are two other Passovers, too, spoken of in the Bible. The other one is the actual exodus of passing over the Red Sea. And that's mentioned in our hymn that we just sang, how the Israelites referred to going over the Red Sea as passing over. It was kind of a symbol of just what had happened in Egypt, and it's happening again. Now we're passing over from death to life. And then... For us, we too have a Passover. We get to pass over from death to life eternal, from this world to the sky, just as our King tells us. And that's a really neat way of looking at that word Passover. It's kind of wordplay a little, but it's, it's neat to think about it that way. So, without Christ, and by nature, we are born with the love of sin, and we need a Passover. We need a Passover lamb. We need some new unleavened bread. We need a fresh batch of dough. Because we are full of yeast in our lives. 
But thanks be to God that Jesus has victoriously conquered death. Now we too can look at death in the face with confidence, knowing that we will be in life eternal. We are a new loaf, a new lump of dough. In Revelation, Christ says, He sits on the throne in splendor and He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I make all things new. What a refreshing thought. What's really new in this life? Have you ever thought about that? Even the new things that we get, like a new car or some kind of new toy to fill our lives at the time, it is new, but it really isn't new very long. We all know that wonderful new car smell. When you get into a new car, it just smells clean, right? And then after a couple of years, you try to maybe throw some cleaner in to make it smell good again, but it just, it just doesn't last. Nothing really lasts in this life. It's something that we have to realize as sinful human beings. But Christ, he sits on his throne and he says to you and me today, Behold, I make all things new. So, what does Paul say that we're to do? Now that we realize that we are no longer the yeasty dough that we once were full of sin, now that we are clean and pure, what are we to do in our daily lives? Paul says that we're to throw the leaven out. Get the leaven out of our lives. It's harmful for us. Don't go back to the way you used to be before you were a Christian. Don't wallow in the pigs, in the mud of the pigs of sinners. No, clean yourself. Get that leaven out. With the love of Christ, of course. But we are to work for our work on our sanctification in our daily lives. God, it is God's will for us that we try our best with His help to better our lives. Now it's true, we'll never be perfect in the sight of the paradise. But that's not an excuse to not try. We are to cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump. And what does he say? As you really are unleavened. We're already unleavened because of Christ. And so out of love for him, we should want and strive to cast that yeast out of our lives. What leaven might you have in your heart today? What yeast am I carrying around inside of me as I go about my week? Are you so angry with a person right now that you refuse to forgive them? Even though maybe they've asked for your forgiveness? Do you turn to drugs and alcohol to try and make your life better? Are you looking at things on your computer and you think nobody is watching? How about pride? How about pride? Maybe we like to think that we're better than other Christians. I, you know, I showed up for church early and I did everything and nobody else did anything. I'm way better than those other people. We all know that we like to think that way sometimes. That's yeast. That's love that's in our lives. And Christ, our Passover lamb, says, Get rid of it. Cast it out. Whatever is troubling you today, whatever sin might be on your conscience, lay it down in the empty tomb, right by the folded grave clothes. Because there, where forgiveness lies there, our sin is left in the tomb. Death and sin and slavery are left there. And with Christ, we walk out a new law of dough. Whatever may be troubling you today, Maybe some things are hurting you right now in your life. Maybe you don't feel, maybe, you, maybe it's not so much that you're struggling with sin, although we all struggle with sin. Maybe you're struggling with the effects of sin right now, today in your life. Maybe a loved one that you know passed away recently, and that's hurting to you. It makes you feel bad. Maybe, maybe you've been, had a troubled, a troubled family member that doesn't want to love you and Cooperate. And even though you try your best to help them, they just don't listen. Whatever is bothering you today, dear Christian friends, lay in the tomb. Lay that yeast in the tomb. Because we are new creatures. We're bound for heaven together because of what Christ has done for us. We walk out of the love of the bread. We walk out of the slavery into freedom 
and pure loss of dough. We will be new. Later on in Corinthians, Paul says this, Now this I say, brothers and sisters, that this mortal flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So what he's saying is, you know, this everything that we see here can't inherit the kingdom of God. It's old, it's dying, it's got a lot of sin. Everything that we see, that this mortal flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the corruptible inherit in corruption. But behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. The trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised to incorruption. Then, when we see Christ face to face, when this body that will lay on the ground and decay, the bodies that we never thought could ever come back to life, will come back to life. And we'll look at Christ in the face, our very Creator, in the face, and we will be new. We won't be the old leavened lumps of dough anymore. We'll be a new lump. And it's all because of Christ. So in this Easter spirit, thank and praise Him. And think about that as you go about your week. Know that even though the things in this life aren't new and don't stay new very long, there's eternal life waiting for you. There's a new lump of dough waiting for you in heaven one day. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, forevermore. Amen. <laughs>
both temporal and spiritual, which without any merit or worthiness on our part, thou hast bestowed upon us. We praise thee especially that thou hast preserved unto us in their purity thy saving word and the sacred ordinances of thy house. And we beseech thee, O Lord, to preserve and extend thy kingdom of grace and to grant unto thy holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach thy word with power and help all those who hear, help all who hear rightly to understand and to truly believe it. Send forth laborers into thy harvest and open the door of faith unto all unbelievers and unto all the people of Israel. In mercy remember the enemies of thy church and grant unto them repentance unto life. Be thou the protector and defender of thy people in all time of tribulation and danger. And may we, in communion with thy church and in brotherly unity with all our fellow Christians, fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow thy grace upon all the nations of the earth. Especially do we entreat thee to bless our land and all its inhabitants, and all who are in authority, cause thy glory to dwell among us, and let thy mercy and truth, righteousness and peace everywhere prevail. To this end, we commend to thy care all our schools, and pray thee to make them nurseries of useful knowledge and Christian virtues, that they may bring forth the wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamities, by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper everyone in his appropriate calling, and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Be thou the God and Father of the widow and the fatherless children, helper of the sick and the needy, and the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Accept, we beseech thee, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before thee, which is our reasonable service. O Lord, we also ask for your loving protection on any of us who may be sick or troubled at this time in this congregation. We also ask that you look with mercy upon the Christians who are being persecuted throughout the world, especially the Christians in Syria, Egypt, and Iraq. We ask that you help them and give them what you promise, the crown of eternal life. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work thou hast given us to do well as the day, before the night cometh which no man can work. And when our last hour shall come, support us by thy power and receive us into thy everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, forever and ever. And we all say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Please stand for prayer. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, unto thy church, thy Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which cometh down from above, that thy word, as becometh it, may not be bound, but have free course, and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve thee, and in the confession of thy name, Abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee.
morning to all of you again. Um, it's great to be with all of you today. Thank you for giving me the privilege of getting to share God's word with you today. Um, I, uh, I know a couple of people from the congregation I haven't been here before, uh, but I know both of them, the Thompsons, of course, who are God now, but I also know um, the Scullin family, or a little bit, I know Rachel at least, because my brother, William, was a debate partner. I don't know if you guys are here on the Scotland's here, not to point you out or anything. Oh, there's, there's Dad. Okay. Anyway, but yeah, so so it's nice. That's, that's the connection I have, but otherwise I've never been here before, so it was wonderful to get to be with you guys. Thanks to our musicians for beautifying our service today. That was great. Both our souls and bells and organs. So uh, thank you to you guys. Um, God bless be with you as you go about your week and say hi to your neighbor before you. Oh, uh, maybe an announcement that some people haven't heard. Uh, this past Easter Sunday, Richard Larson suffered a stroke and is now recovering at the Ekerman Nursing Home in Detroit Lakes. And you know, if you wanted to see him, maybe contact Shirley. And I think he's going to see visitors, but you can check first. And also, uh, this past week, Burton Landy has fallen and broken the wrist, but he's now home recovering. And uh, just two of our members to keep in your prayers this week. Isn't Richard at Oak Crossing? I maybe made, made a mistake. We got him right. Oak Crossing. They told me that came in first. That's right. Ah, yeah, make sure to keep them in your prayers. Thank you for, for letting me know about that. Uh, otherwise, I, I don't know if there are any other announcements. <coughs> um, thank you to you all. Anybody, does anybody have any announcements quick? Anything? Anybody needs to keep it? Okay, all right. With that, then, um, thanks again for letting me know. 